Hey everybody, this is Matt Stopa again. Got another video this time. It's going to be on the Ruby array methods, push, pop, and shift. And what they do is they allow you to use Ruby arrays as a stack. Now, if you're not familiar with a stack, it's a basic computer science uh, data structure where essentially, I mean, if you want to think about it, just think of like a stack of papers on your desk. You know, you put them down, you know, one at a time, and when you pull things off of there, you, you typically are going to pull off the top element. And that's how a stack works. You put The first thing you put in is the last thing you pull out. So that's called first in, last out. And it's got a variety of uses. It's actually used all over the place in the internals of compilers. And uh, in, in assembly language, it's used an enormous amount, though it's a little bit different. Um, but we'll get into it today and you can kind of see an example usage. Yeah, what we're going to do today is use it in terms of a video game. So think about a game where a character has to go along and as he goes, he picks up different elements. As he picks up these elements, though, the one condition is that he has to use the last element that he got. So in order to do that, let's start. So we'll make this array and we'll say push. Now push puts the element on the stack. So we say push some wood, array push uh, an axe, and array push some food. Oop, food. Okay, so now he's got these three elements. If we look at R, we have these three elements. Now, like we said, he, want, he can only use the top element. So to do that, we say r.pop and we get food, which is the last item entered. And now if we look at our array, we see we have wood and an axe, but no food anymore. That's because it's destructive. This pop method will pull off the last element, return it to you, but remove it from the array at the same time. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now that we've done that, let me show you another aspect of this. So let's say, you know, we've got our array. Now let's push the food back on there. Also, we'll say r.push some water. Also very useful. Now, what if we realize, hey, wait a second, our guy has two hands. Maybe he should actually be using both. He can have an item in each hand, right? So we'll say r, and this is what's cool. Say pop, and you get two elements instead of one. And this number can be any number that you want. If we look at array, it's down to only two elements, wood and axe, which were the first, the first two elements entered. So that's how stacks can be useful. Uh, obviously, this game example is a little bit made up, but you will find times when you really want to push things onto a stack and you just get the last element entered rather than just the first. So let me show you the second method, though, and it's sort of a twist, or this is actually the third method, but... Uh, it's a little bit of a twist on the typical Ruby or the typical stacks functionality. So if we say R and now we'll go ahead and push a few elements back on. Well, this time we'll put on the water, R.push, uh, the food. Okay, so we've got four elements again. As you can see, wood again was the first element entered. So all we have to say is R.shift. And look, it returns the first element rather than the last. So the Ruby arrays are so versatile, not only do they function as stacks, but they allow you to pull from the bottom or the top. So you can go along and add items to the array in any order that you want, but when you want to pull the first or last element, you now have a way to do so. So looking at our array, there you go, axe, water, and food. Now, what's also cool is just like pop, if we say shift two, we get two elements. Now that's it. That's pretty much all there is to using Ruby arrays as stacks. And let me tell you though, I mean, if you've worked with other languages like Java, you'll definitely appreciate this functionality because uh, and this is just one of the many times where Ruby simplifies life because instead of having to pull different data structures or different uh, objects into your application, you, you can do everything right on the same object. And that is really nice. So that's it for stacks in Ruby, the array, pop, push, and shift methods. Uh, there'll be a lot more coming, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Thanks.